This is Solar PV TV once again from Australia, from All Energy Event. And now we are together with uh, Andy from Gippsland Solar, uh, founder of uh, one of the most important solar companies here in the country. Hello, Andy. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Thomas. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Very good. So how did you enjoy yesterday's party of Solar Juice? We had a very good night. Yes, it's been a very long day, uh, but it was worth it. We had a fantastic time. Uh, I think it shows the way that the industry is booming. And everyone's working very hard, but also having a lot of fun as well. It's a great place to be in the moment in the solar industry. So I think that you like uh, this idea, you know, that solar is not uh, B2B, not B2C, but H2H, yeah? Human yeah, to human. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about relationships. I've been in the industry now for 17 years, uh, and the friendships and relationships that I have in so this industry. I'm jealous because I'm only in solar since 14 years. Oh, well, you've got to have to start somewhere. <laughs> So 17 years in Australia? Yeah, so I've been in the industry now for half my life. Um, wow. I first got into the industry when I was 18 years old and from the minute I learned about how solar works, I just fell in love with it. Uh, and it's all I've ever wanted to do and fortunate enough now that we can be in an industry that's booming and we get to do what we love. It's a great place to be. Okay, Andy, because it's very interesting. I'm always, you know, telling people the story of solar, yeah? Because I I'm working since 14 years, but you are working since 17 years. So, uh, what was uh, you know solar like uh, 17 years ago? Well, the first solar panel I ever sold was an 80 watt panel, so it was about this big, ah. and I think it cost about $1,100 to charge a battery for an electric fence. Uh, so, what we've what we've seen in the last 17 years, the way that the systems have evolved, um, the way the technology has evolved. Uh, customers are getting more sophisticated and the level of quality in the industry is just rising every single week. You know, we, we do a lot of commercial systems um, and when we're in competitive tenders now, the bar is just so high and you need to be so sophisticated. Um, we have 35 staff now full time uh, and we, we're adding more people to that team every month. Um, so there's, there's a lot of work out there for the right companies and uh, the, the good companies are being finding themselves being really successful and, and if you're not innovating, mm -hmm. uh, you won't succeed. It's, it's a very challenging time, but it's great. And how do you observe, you know, like an attitude of the society in Australia? Uh, attitude towards renewable energy? Yes. Well, it's, it's a fantastic time to be in renewables in Australia. Um, the area that I live is actually called the Latrobe Valley in the middle of Gippsland. Um, and we've just closed the coal-fired power station. Uh, and even in that area, up until two years ago, people saw renewables as a threat to coal-fired power. Wow. Now people understand that there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of jobs, a lot of investment, uh, and they're all embracing this opportunity and, and seeing what we can do and create a cleaner future and also um, create new industry as well. It's fantastic. Yeah, because actually even you know, for the guys in the coal mines, it's better to have a job, you know, on the fresh yeah. sunny air than, you know, underground. Yeah? Absolutely. I mean, when the Hazelwood Power Station closed in my area, um, there was a guy that came to us looking for an opportunity to do some labouring. Uh, he was 52 years old. He'd been a boiler cleaner at Hazelwood for 25 years. It's a very, very tough job. And now he's up on a roof in the sunshine putting down yeah. solar panels and he just said, I've never been happier. But this is very interesting, you know, because we have a lot of, uh, of this kind of discussions in Europe, yes? Especially in the regions where, you know, there is still a uh, big density of, you know, of uh, coal mines. Yeah? Yeah. And I think this is the very important now strategy for this region to just transform. Yes? Absolutely. They don't have to lose. Yeah, I mean. And what we say in the Latrobe Valley, there's still three power stations in the Latrobe Valley employing around 2,000 people. And what we're trying to tell people is you can actually keep those coal-fired power stations now and keep those jobs, but also build up a new skilled industry and we can transfer those workers across as we make the energy transition. So we can have the best of both worlds for another 20 or 30 years, but at some stage the world is moving to renewables and if we don't embrace that now, we are going to miss those opportunities. Exactly. So this year, uh, in your opinion, what will be the total size of the Australian market? Oh, I actually don't even know the size of the Australian market. I know in our own business, um, our volume has grown by 100% in the last 12 months ah. and another 100% the year before that. Um, and we're sort of on track for another doubling this, uh, this year. So we've gone from four staff to 35 staff in four years. Uh, and we see a roadmap to 50 staff by the end of next year. So it's a very exciting time and I just love employing people. I love training young people, young electricians on how to install renewable energy and they're very passionate about what they do. So they can make a living and still do what they love. It's just a, it's a great and industry it's to be in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a happy time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So how do you see now, you know, the next years in Australia? Do you still see some challenges? You know? The, the challenges in our industry in the next uh, one to two years are mostly around the politi politics. Um, we don't have any policy framework. Um, I can't believe that a country like Australia, being an established economy, has no renewable energy plan after 2020. Oh. That's only three years away. It's crazy. 
And we're looking to make 15 year investments in an industry that only has policy certainty for three years. Is the sovereign risk there that is a real problem? And it's, it's still stalling investment. So even though we've doubled in the last 12 months, with policy certainty, we could have grown even more and employed even more people. So we just call on all levels of government to put aside their differences and just create a framework to build investment and allow renewable energy to grow and, and get a bigger share of the market. And then how do you see now, you know, especially like uh, this year, last year, the influence of uh, energy storage? Well, this is a, my most uh, exciting time for me is, is the energy storage. It's not just the way the battery storage is coming down in price, but we're at this amazing point in history where battery storage is coming uh, through into the market at the same time that smart technology is coming through as well. So now, in two years' time, we can go into a street uh, and actually put solar and batteries on all 10 of these houses and actually have uh, what we call peer-to-peer -peer trading, ah. where people are selling energy to their neighbours instead of feeding the grid, um, and everyone's got their own little micro-grid. Uh, we see the intersection of battery storage and smart technology as the big opportunity for this industry going forward. Okay, so do you imagine also that uh, Gippsland Solar uh, in the future will be Gippsland Solar and AV? And EV? 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 Oh, and EV, yes. Uh, electric vehicles. Yeah. Well, I actually drive an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. So I've had a Tesla electric vehicle now for uh, 12, 18 months. Oh. Uh, I'll never go back to another um, ICE vehicle ever again. I love my electric vehicle. I plug it into our shop during the day and I charge off solar. I'm driving around on sunshine. So, no, but do you think also that uh, your company, you know, will not be just like you know, focus on the energy, but also on immobility? Yep, or? absolutely. So we've been working with Tesla now and other companies for a while. We install um, EV charging stations. Mm -hmm. So we've just done one hotel in Gippsland. We put a 30 kilowatt system on the roof, and we gave them two EV charging stations for no extra cost. Um, and now they have a new income stream from new consumers that want to come and, and charge the car there and have a meal. So we see things like EV tourism and, and um, transferring your solar energy from your house to your work in your vehicle. Okay, That's so it. your, let's say, uh, uh, future of your company will be not only energy, but also mobility, yes? Absolutely, uh, distributed renewable energy available 24 hours a day. Uh, it just makes so much sense. Okay, so last question uh, about uh, Rami. Andrew and uh, Solar Juice. Ah, Are you gonna yes. to work with these guys in the future also? I've never been so happy as working with Solar Juice. They, they're, they're such a great company to deal with. I call them, I say I have an issue, I need you to help me on this one. But they, nothing's too hard for them. Um, I've never had a relationship in this industry where they were so willing to help and go the extra mile. Uh, and for us, in a dynamic industry where things move quickly, having someone like Solar Juice that is flexible and just willing to jump in a car and help us if we need help, um, we value that relationship very strongly and we're very happy customers. Okay, so thank you so much, Andy. Nice to meet you. That was uh, very nice to meet one of the pioneers, yes, in ah, the country. Yes. Who started with 80 watt uh, uh, modules. 80 watt panels. And maybe we'll finish uh, with the sales of electric vehicles. Yeah? And we've just done our first 1000 kilowatt system, one megawatt, so it's, it's been a, quite the journey. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. That was Solar TV TV, I think, for the last time from Australia, from all energy events and see you next year in Sydney. Thanks for watching.